everyone good morning good afternoon good evening paul trani here with the one and only rick ostenbrook you say your name much more appropriate i want you you to say hello to everybody and welcome them hello i'm rick (laughs) rick ostenbrook yeah that's an appropriate way translate into (laughs) eastern pants (laughs) (laughs) translates eastern pants eastern Uh, pants baby What's funny is Rick actually does not usually have an accent just on this live stream. He's been doing this whole accent thing, which has been really fun. So thanks for hanging out with us. Day two, buddy. Yesterday was awesome. Thanks, man. Um, Just want to shout out to everybody in chat. If you didn't see it, it's worth worth a rewatch. Watch later. But uh, welcome, Robert, Mustafa, uh, Wade, Rob Zill in the house, Matt, Andreas. Feel free to say hello to Rick. Give him a warm welcome. And also, if you're new, we'd love to, you know, give you a virtual hug. And uh, yeah, welcome you. So yeah, buddy. Day two, buddy. You ready for this? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Like day one went pretty smoothly, I guess. Like I was, I was a bit nervous at the beginning. I was like, okay, I got to perform for virtual people. But it's actually way easier to perform for virtual people instead of real people. So yeah. Yeah, it can, it can be easier. I mean, you can't you can't read everybody's faces. Maybe <laughs> maybe that's a good thing because you're like that person just yawned. What did I? What did yeah. I, am I boring? You know, none of yeah. that gets in the way. Exactly um, that. Uh, so yeah. So yeah. Should we go? Should I do yeah. a quick introduction once again? Yeah, do it. Okay. Hi, my name is Rick Ostenbroek. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, uh, Hilversum, which is 20 minutes from Amsterdam. I'm born and raised here. Uh, I'm, I am a freelance artist for over 13 years. I realized it yesterday. I always thought it was like 10 years, but apparently it's already 13 years, which is quite <laughs> basic. <laughs> You're only off by three times the amount. <laughs> oh man, so sick. But uh, yeah, uh, so what do I do? Uh, I do a little bit of art direction, 3D art, illustration, motion graphics. Uh, everything is kind of like, everything I do is kind of colorful, abstract. Uh, that's simply what I like doing. And I'm blessed to be able to make a living out of this. And that's super cool. Um, and it's a great variety of pro- projects, of course, uh, with all those like skills you got, all those variety of assets um, you can work with. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah. this is, boom. Sorry, this is a new slide, Paul. I just want- Transition, wanted... wow. <laughs> that was nice. No, because like back in the days, I never thought about being a designer or artist. I think it, I realized that when I was like 18 or something that you could actually make a living out of that. But when I was like really a small kid, I would say like five years old, the only thing I wanted to do was blowing leaves as a profession. Mm-hmm. We, we mm-hmm. do have that in the Netherlands where like in the, in the autumn, uh, you get up, you wake up and by that noise that there are people in the streets that are blowing leaves. And I was oh. so amazed by that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you like yeah. blowing leaves. <laughs> well, I just think it's cool. Like you know, don't <laughs> don't look down on any profession. You know, no, what I'm no, saying? no, for sure, like, no. Do do you do you whatever you is. <laughs> yeah, whatever and you it's is. But and it's it's, cool. it's such a random thought, and I was always amazed by this like profession. Uh, so I think until the age of ten, I was like, okay, yeah, I want to blow leaves. That's um, awesome. But I didn't end up blowing leaves. Uh, I started messing up with uh, messing around with Photoshop, uh, a bit of Illustrator, uh, f- like using stock assets uh, and and blend everything together in Photoshop. Actually, like vector elements, uh, photo uh, photography, uh, typography, whatever you could think of. So it's kind of like how I started my journey learning some vector, uh, but also learning some 3D, which is actually the same file. Uh, but nice. it's, it's cool like to to expand your skill set, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, illustration kind of work, uh, 
wallpaper kind of work, uh, abstract kind of work, uh, Adobe Max kind of work. So there, there's like a lot of stuff I do and, and everything is quite colorful. If I, yeah, I, I definitely can say that all of those elements over here are black and white. That was a big challenge for me, but uh, in the end it looked cool. Yeah, it does look cool. By the way, real fast, I'm sure you did that in C4D, right? Which one? I, the the Max graphics with the swirling yeah, yeah, black yeah, and yeah, white. Yeah. Is... yeah, but the intention was like to to make it almost look like it's done in Illustrator. So that's yes. just kind of like the idea behind it. Um, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it when graphic, I consider yourself like more of like a graphic designer. You're a graphic mm -hmm. designer, you know? And when you get a hold of like 3D software, because you think of 3D software is like, I'm going to make some realistic scene. Yeah. And you're like, no, I'm making, uh, you know, C4D look like Illustrator. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like going more like actually the opposite direction instead of making stuff look real, uh, <laughs> making stuff look very cheap as mm -hmm. graphical like like as it could be screen printed or something like that instead of like a super realistic water landscape scene with like real light and textures and mm -hmm. all of that like i'm i'm definitely not that kind of guy uh no offense regarding that like if, if you're doing that it's totally cool but i yeah. like to keep it abstract and not too realistic your work reminds me of uh, uh, oh. Luke Cho Luke Choice. Do you know Luke Choice? Of course, I know Luke Choice. There you go. You, you have <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> oh, Just, thanks, man. No, I'm a Luke, I'm a yeah. I'm a Luke fanboy as well. Because I think he's Vel awesome. Velvet Spectrum. Yeah, Velvet Spectrum. He's, he's a great awesome. guy. Yeah, yeah so I, cool. I I hang out with him like last year at Adobe Max as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, let's go on to Z by HP. Um, I'm a proud ambassador of Z by HP uh, with this beautiful group of people um, who encourage like creatives to push themselves, uh, hook me up with sweet hardware to test that and to, to test his limits as well. Um, I've been yeah, well, what, what does it mean? So I'm sorry to interrupt, but you kind of mentioned HP and uh, by Z ambassador, like what, what does that mean? I assume they're all ambassadors here. What does that entail for you? <laughs> Uh, what does it mean? Um, well, yeah, first of all, it's, it's, I would say like, it's, it's a, some sort of collaboration you got, like you have that engagement with a client, like always, but this is like an ongoing thing. So, um, you create stuff together, but you also give feedback on their product line. Like they want me to test their machines and see if it has limits or not. Uh, what, what could they improve on their product line? um and i think it's quite cool like it's it's a nice i would say it's more of a collaboration because like they listen to what i want to create and uh um and try to match that with their software and yeah. they don't really and at the same time we create work together as well which is also pretty cool and the cool thing is that they always let me do whatever i want to do and that's not like too common Mm -hmm. uh, when being a freelance artist, I would say. So, um, no, that's totally yeah. cool. And, um, no, that's like, it's fun. So yeah, we collaborate on cool stuff. We create graphics together or well, me, I create the graphics for them. <laughs> we stay can use for, for different outputs, uh, wallpapers, campaigns, uh, they even, yeah. they even filmed me back home over here with like a massive crew, which was super cool. Like they, they made a short little documentary about this, mm -hmm. this guy from Hilversum, um, who's just doing random graphics on his computer. So that's like, I feel so, valued by them Yeah, and that's good. And that's good. I mean, like you don't always feel valued by your clients. So. I think that's a yeah, good thing. Yeah, and honestly, like you're doing a, they're, them a job. You're doing a job. So like, I'm yeah. sorry if you feel like you need a pat on the bat as a pat on the back as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're in the commercial world, yeah, you're there to provide a service. Like Word. you, you know what I'm saying? Your feelings don't matter. And no, that's no, no, the exactly. biggest problem people have when they first get into the industry. Yeah, I know you, you got your feelings hurt tough. You're that's it. That's world. that's that's a really interesting thing, though, because like at first starting out, like being a commercial artist is really like tricky to to keep your emotions like for your private stuff and not get emotionally involved with client projects. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. But this is a cool project and Very it's a cool. nice. It's a nice collaborative uh, thing, and we're also so working. Lucky. 
on our own collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And so it actually, many jealous people in chat, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. They're like, stop bragging. No, just oh, I'm man. just joking. <laughs> no, no, no. But it, it's it's a very cool, like, and we got a conversation going and that's, that's always cool. So yeah, we're working with all the ambassadors. I think it's like six right now, like global ambassadors. And we get to travel the world together or well not together but for certain events like we show up and we do our thing over there and uh, yeah it's super cool um but on the hardware side of things it's interesting as well uh especially because i've been like a mac user for i would say 10 years of my freelance life <laughs> and i'm an ambassador for three years so hp really made me switch um why is that yeah that's mainly like the the power it has uh, the graphic power, um, especially when we're working like with animation and 3D, it's super urgent to have like proper GPUs, which you can upgrade on a frequent base. Like not that you got one GPU and that's it, that, that it doesn't like limit you at all. And that's, that's a good thing. Um, it was a bit challenging to get used to the, to the, to the windows, uh, interface at some point, but, um, I remap, I still remap my keyboard. Uh, so my windows button is my, uh, control button right now. <laughs> oh, do you? Oh yeah. Okay, it's brilliant. Nice. It's brilliant. Yeah, it makes it totally. work. It makes it like, totally. it makes it easier to, to make like the, the step towards, uh, to windows. So, uh, yeah, I got the C4, I got the dream color display, which you can't see right here, but it's over here. Mm -hmm. Uh, great display. Uh, and they're coming with a new one or it's already there, uh, which I will like most likely get to test out soon. Uh, so yeah, man, it's like, and this crazy new ZBook create over here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Like if you do set a, like create on the go and like, how would you do that as opposed to the, 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 the previous slide with your desktop, this is your, yeah. no, this is too bulky to carry around for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this, this 31, uh, inch, uh, screen, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's great to have like proper render power in your, uh, machine, like in your portable machine. So, uh, no, it's definitely like, I can definitely recommend it because it's like, it's pretty thin if you, if you can see it, like, Ooh, that's, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty thin. Pretty and sexy. imagine like you can, you can do like crazy 3d renders with that. Um, and I mean, that's beneficial when working, uh, yeah, when you work outside your studio, basically, right? Exactly that. You would use this to create content yeah. on the go, if you will. And usually you would travel and always, whenever I travel, I always get stuff to do for clients. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, it's a, some sort of weakness, like from my side to always say yes. And it apparently ends up being a my vacation. But uh, no, I mean, it's ideal, but for now we can travel. So um, I'm definitely going to test it out once, once everything's back to normal again. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, regarding regarding everything yeah. uh, what we uh what we're going to discuss today uh yeah we did uh, we did some stuff yesterday actually i don't know if there are many people in the chat who watched yesterday who are there right now as well um but uh i work a lot in photoshop with like colorful abstract forms uh, and kind of create like a 3d feel to that um which isn't real 3d of course because it's simply you by color touches and brushes and whatever. But I've been using this technique for over eight years, I must say, or something like that. Um, so I did like various outputs of that. Uh, stock photos. Um, and today we're going to focus on typography. It. And it's like, those are like references uh, from like, okay, I, I like to mess with typography. So you got the 3D, 3D way of doing it on the left and you got like the analog way on the right where it's like an actual real wooden piece uh but today we're gonna do that in photoshop and it's like this kind of style yeah into it so that's it well it's not it but uh i'm sure there's lots as you transition by the way i just want to highlight that we are doing artist spotlights so today in about 80 minutes we're, we're going to review uh an artist or anyone who submits something through the form uh, you're submitting your, you know, Behance uh, projects, and maybe we will highlight you in future streams. So we want to just cool. like give you guys a chance to highlight you as designers and artists. So do that through Artist Spotlight. We'll do that in 80 minutes. 
Cool. And this looks awesome, by the way, Rick. This is awesome. Yeah, this is where we landed yesterday. And I thought like, okay, uh, we could continue. But as you can see, like it would be mainly uh, finessing and finishing. And I'm not too sure if that's like interesting to do for, for an hour straight. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe we can just like pick one of those letters, like the R or the C or the O, mm -hmm. uh, the ones we did in Illustrator yesterday. Um, so what would you say? Should we go with the R, Paul, or should we go with the yeah. O? Or with uh, the o? Not the O, probably do. I think something more interesting like the R would be good. Okay, yeah, it's also the first letter of my name, so I'm totally- Oh confident. yeah. <laughs> so this is gonna be so good because I am just like this. Cause I think you're gonna take one letter, like even if you just show us how to like really trick out one letter, yeah. the R becomes I, a P, becomes an I, you know, it's like all builds upon itself is the hope. Word. So yeah, let's let's create a new file. Uh, create like let's use this. Oh, it's black. Of, uh, it should be black, of course. I'll invert it. Oh wait, no, no, no. I did it the wrong way. I need to have this canvas around it. Uh, Pathfinder, where are you at? There we go. Into Photoshop. Let us know if you have questions in chat. Would love to see what you got going on. People really like the the owl and the skull. Golden oh, Rose nice. really likes your your works. Cool and so beautiful. This is I think Thank beautiful you. and candy like. Just, <laughs> and and I don't even like sweet food, so it's like <laughs> I never eat candy. But I get that association a lot. Uh, Close tap group. It it. Constantly opens up that panel. Like you wanted me to to remove it yesterday. Um, I, oh, the properties uh, panel. Yeah. I should see if there's a way to make that not open up every time. Okay. Do you do you use that color panel above it? No, I I, j I just switched it for yesterday. Uh, like for yesterday, so ba you made me switch, but I used it today and it felt good. Uh, oh, okay. It's Never just, mind. It's just new for me. Another way to work is to put the properties panel over the color panel. So when it does pop up, it doesn't reduce your layers panel. Word. So yeah. You do your thing. First, going to create some vector kind of layers over my R. I always like the shape of the letter R. I don't know why, but. Um, hmm. Equal amounts of like hard edges to soft edges. That's it, like it creates, oh, I double clicked somewhere on per, uh, not on purpose. Uh, well, not feeling this shit. That, that happens a lot, actually. Like I'm drawing a shape and when I drew it, it's like, ah, oh, no, this is not gonna work. So let's go more subtle in here. Move it a bit to the background. Some nice intersecting stuff going on also really interesting to see like where you can make the letter more dynamic uh on the inside because it's a pretty stiff letter since you're you're working with harder edges um mm -hmm. i always find it interesting like, mm, no this should be above that one how many layers are we going for four i don't know man yeah sometimes i merge i merge layers as well um See, so like, make this a bit bigger. And again, just like using you, you know, and actually who was on before you and before the Daily Creative Challenge was uh, Magdal Lopez. He he does this a lot too. His his go-to tool is the pen tool in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Which and is it's like one of the OG tools, I, I feel. Yeah. Do, you use, do you use it often? Uh, yes, but I noticed in Photoshop, I'm, I'm an anomaly, I think, because I use uh the uh lasso tool mm -hmm. with my mouse because i feel like i can get pretty accurate with the mouse with just the lasso tool word but uh if i wanted a really clean line and something to be really exact i'll definitely use the pen tool uh do you use a mouse still like you don't yeah. use like a, a, pe a tablet no but uh exciting news folks i'm finally getting a wacom tablet this year Ooh. for for christmas basically so i'm super excited i'm finally getting a wacom so we'll see what happens. 
I might like All it. Right. I might just end up working <laughs> like with my mouse in front of a Wacom. <laughs> There's always like a trans transition period of like a week, I would say. I have to get used to it. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's nice. It's, it feels more natural. Uh, but for this, this is this is good. I really liked how you, and I'll let you, I don't want to distract you, but I kind of want to talk while you're doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Go talk. Because I like how you actually showed us that uh, it was like a Game Boy. It was 2D, yeah. vector, and then all of a sudden it was 3D. Yeah. So when you're creating these vector shapes, yeah, they could remain flat or you can actually make them 3D mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, uh, you know, yeah. future step. Not, maybe not this one exactly, but you see what I'm saying. It's like the ve if something's in a vector form, it's almost a universal format to bring into right. C4D, to extrude, to bring into Photoshop and polish it or whatever. That's also why I like vector a lot. Like I'm not, I'm not good at Illustrator, but it's super versatile. Like everything you create in there, like you can blow it up crazy, but you can also export it very nicely uh, into other programs. Yeah. Um, okay. Yo okay. Yo Rotiman is asking if we're really going to amp up the cool effects on this letter. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, we're going to amp it up. We're going to take it to a Hell yeah. Up. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see. Have a color in here, maybe. And then, so there's like a little bit of tweaking to see like which color matches. Like there's always a color mm -hmm. off you need to change. Um, looks, it's looking pretty good though. Yeah, but it's too basic. Like okay. and I'll, I'll, I'll I'll save I'll save this one uh, so you, we can check the progress later on. Like how much we achieved within a short amount of time. Um, so yeah, so for those of you who just are joining us. I'm here with Rick Ostenbrook. He is a, he is a, um, I guess, a, I don't know, like a, tried to break into the leaf blowing industry, but failed. And now he's <laughs> resulting to graphic design. So if there is anybody out there doing leaf blowing, <laughs> you're just doing this in the meantime until you could break into the oh, man. leaf blowing industry. I love I this too. I love it when you, you know, the negative space, when some of that's missing, I think that looks cool, just FYI. Exactly that. And you can fill up those gaps to make it a bit more organic over here. I just don't see like how far I can push it because I don't see the boundaries right now. Uh, wait a second, mm. I'll, I'll make it a little bit darker so I see exactly where my workspace is. Um, and yeah, and I, Rick, I do have to thank you for, you know, working on a very low resolution because I think typically on whatever HBZ book you're on, your resolution is really high. Does it feel, yeah. is, has it been tough? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 tricky? but it's like deliverers, uh, deliverables from clients are always quite high as well. Like every, like sometimes I have to give like PSDs, which are like 25 by 25K pixels in like 300 dpi on like 32 bits and i'm like oh my god wow yeah screen resolution is huge thing yeah but it's like yeah i i had to resize it for the for the streaming purpose i'm sorry about that like i know it's uh we just it's appreciate, we appreciate we appreciate you doing it just because it helps us see everything better so thank you uh let's make this a bit more dark yeah i'll, I'll get rid of Oh, what's that? Oh yeah, Colette asks an, a good question. Like, what what resolution or size is this current PSD at? And does uh, it even matter? To be honest with you, no. Right now, it doesn't. Uh, always in the sketch phase. Like, I can always resize it because it's factor pads. But right now, I'm working. I don't know where what was Colette, right? Uh, who was asking? Yeah. Yeah, yep, where, 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 where you're from, if it's inches or centimeters, um, it matters a lot. But it's like A4 in European size. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's it's not too big. But usually I, I'd say um, whenever I start, I would go like two or three times this size. Uh, just in case you want to print it or whatever. Like, it would be a shame. Like, you, you're never going to recreate something you already did. Uh, or you can, but it would be a waste of your time, in my opinion. Uh, so better, the bigger, the better, I would say. 
Yeah, for sure. If your if your machine can handle it. Luckily, mm -hmm. this is vector. This is really little. Like yeah. the last thing you want to do is save the file. That's for sure. Oh yeah, wait a second. Just kidding. I'm no, 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 no. such it's, a it's jerk. A and actually, somebody uh, else is asking because you mentioned sketch. Are you just you are just kind of sketching this out now? It's not like you have a preformed idea of what this will look no, like. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, like you probably uh, you know this like. Two minutes, uh -huh. two minutes before the stream, I didn't know what to do. So <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is really like I was like, your name is Rick. You're about yeah. to live stream in Photoshop. It's like, oh, OK, OK, just joking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Like, let's keep it spontaneous. But that's that's always how I work. Like, I never really have a, a very like plan, like a very clear plan to what well, depends, of course, if you're working for a client, you somehow have directions. So within those directions, you start working. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm working on personal stuff, it, I it's like most of the time, it's like, I don't know, I would say like 10, 10% of the time, I don't have like a plan in mind. Okay, now. but you do you have this like archive of of knowledge and experience and and everything like you still kind of know what works and like what yeah yeah, yeah but that's out of experience um, it's not like i wouldn't say that i'm very conceptual or, or whatever that i'm totally like overthinking whatever i do mm -hmm. so add some colors that's but cool. some yeah i got those same gradients again like the primary color to like the transparent one i mm -hmm. always like to mess with that Let's darken this one up a notch to see where we at. Mm. I think like this brown one might be a bit too bulky. So let's get rid of that. See how we can fill those gaps up. Um, super organic. I'm loving it. Thanks, man. I feel like you can, since you, you don't, you know, a lot of your stuff is like conceptual and kind of like on the fly. You Do you watch shows or listen to music or podcasts <laughs> while you're working typically? Uh, music, like I, or or I watch like uh, cycling a lot uh, once it's it's out there, like uh, Tour de France and stuff like that, because okay. it, it goes on for ages. And it's just like, yes. <laughs> especially like the, 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 uh, how do you call that? Like the, uh, the the journalists from Belgium who commentate on that are like amazing. Like it's super relaxing to listen that to that. Ah. And otherwise, yeah, I, I listen to music like twenty four seven. I would say. So this is the first time I'm working without music on. Uh, yeah, and it's driving you crazy. Oh no, man. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably like having golf or, or baseball would be maybe yeah. the uh, U.S. equivalent. Yeah. Probably. No offense to people who love baseball. I mean, baseball's awesome. <laughs> but it's uh, they're long innings, and it never gets too loud or too quiet. It's perfect perfect napping <laughs> shows. Okay, we go golf more. is perfect for napping. Yeah, but so is cycling. Like people don't get me why I watch it. Like uh, although my, my friends don't get it why I'm watching that. Oh yeah, I, I love I love it. I love it. That's awesome. But yeah, music is always like super important to me. Uh, to to it's just like it's getting you in the vibe, and it also mm. like the different kinds of music can also influence your work. Like listening to classical can make you create total different stuff than listening to like a new Kendrick Lamar joint or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Green, nah, it's too intense. Boom. So I, I just um, actually um, would like to have the whoever's watching in in chat. Maybe you can try to guess what music Rick might listen to based on his artwork. I'd be interested in seeing what you guys think he listens to. I don't even know yet. Don't don't spoil it. Just like we'll let it go for a little bit. How much, how much time do keep people get to answer that? Just a, the whole hour. We can we can, oh we the can, whole hour. Well, we we could pick it up later. It's not an urgent, but I'm kind of curious as to what you listen to and honestly, what good what good designer music is out there. I don't know. Is is there a designer music? Is there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What, what do you listen to? I think they're, well, I'm all over. I've been getting into like uh, alternative rock. Like my my big, my top played, played band this year was Angels at Airwaves. 
<laughs> I don't even know what that yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it's very much alternative rock. One of the lead singers of Blink-182. It's like oh, nice. it's very arena rock. It's like 30 seconds to Mars. But that's just in my, you know, Spotify top played list. I don't know if it's the best designer music. You know, I would go, I would actually go for Tycho. Tycho would be good. Oh, yeah, best. Scott Hansen. Mainly because Scott's a designer. So that works. Word. Yeah, I just saw him before like the COVID, like a concert. That was, that was, oh, I was so lucky, cool. lucky enough to be, <laughs> that was like a week before all concerts were not like happening. I remember much. him, I think he was performing at like uh, FITC one year. Oh, that's possible. Long time ago. So anyways, it's cool that he's a designer. We have rap, we have country music, we have K-pop. Ooh, K-pop. K-pop. I like the idea of you listening to K-pop. <laughs> totally into this. Hmm. Psychedelic. Eminem. Eminem. P Pantera. Daft Punk is a great... Oh, Daft Punk. Yeah, that's that's designer music, I believe. Right, kinda, I think so too. Kind of, like, that's I like a... I know it's cute. Cool I think music. any if you're trying to make something cool, any music that makes you just feel cool. You know how there's some music that just makes you you just feel cool listening to it. You're like, oh, this is cool. I feel cool. I don't know. Bonobo. I don't Bonobo know. is cool too. I gotta check them out. Um, I don't know if some of these people are messing with me or not. The Screeching Weasels is that kind of a <laughs> real band? What is that name? I don't know. It sounds like it would hurt my ears. Oh, yeah, it definitely will. Oh, I see. I could see Rob Zilla listening to a little jazz. I could see that. That's listening good. In the flow. Bebop, to be specific. Mm, yeah. Let's create some. There actually there. is, if you could find it, I think this was done for maybe AIGA or something. There actually is a song called Make the Logo Bigger. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you've heard it before. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a terrible song. Well, it's funny yeah, to listen it, to. It, it's terrible in the best way. They're perfectly aware <laughs> of, uh, that they're going for this loud rock and roll song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite an intense, like, rock song indeed. Yeah. Oh, doorbell. Doorbell. Uh, my Grubhub's here. I'll be right back. Just kidding. I, sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, there we go. Paco, Glass Animals. Dude, I've been listening to a lot of Glass Animals, too. Portugal Demand, I can totally see that. Portugal Myst Demand, love that. Yeah. I don't know Mystic Braves or so. Satori, but thank you for uh, adding to the convo. Okay, let's create some shadow. Rainbow Kitten Surprise. I could see you listening to Rainbow Kitten Surprise based on how colorful your artwork is. Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Yeah. But all those names, man. Like, I used to give myself nicknames as an artist as well, but I'm always wondering, like, how people come up with those names. Because for me, like, I called myself Enkyo, which doesn't mean anything. And it was just like a random combination of words uh, that didn't make any, mm -hmm. any sense. <laughs> but it's totally cool. The, the genius of that is, is all the Twitter hand, like every social media profile is available for that made up word, typically. Yeah. Yeah. So a smart move to begin with. Oh. Yeah, but then I wanted like rick.com, R-I-K, and it's like not, not available anymore. It's a shame. It's like some retired talk show host from the US, like from a local TV station somewhere. Ah, oh, don't you hate that? And they're like oh. not gonna give it up because it's probably too complex for them to figure out how to exchange <laughs> money online Yeah, yeah, or yeah. something. So, and if you are just joining us, so Rick says you're just painting on individual layers. You do separate yeah. out the layers by color, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm Makes kind sense. of like creating a sense of depth in here by just a multiply layer. Uh, I actually used the background color as color source and drew over that in a gray multiply layer. Like I'll create a new one so you can see it. So that way uh -huh. uh, you can still change colors after because it's gray, so it's a neutral color. So let's mm -hmm. say I'll make this orange. I'm not going to make it yellow because you want me to end up doing yellow stuff again. So I'll make it. <laughs> like you can see, still feel like the sense of depth. In, yeah. Uh, while you can change color. So you can always move back from this point on, which is good. Uh, it makes you flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's just, just a matter That's of good. shadow maps and kind of like it's it's good to have some knowledge in in the 3d field like mm -hmm. um so you kind of know like where the light is coming from 
This over here, yeah. like this is more the shadowy area. So the light comes from the left. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you even have a little bounce light on the curve of the outside of the R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 what I'm going for. <laughs> that's awesome. But I, I think that's something most people would miss. They would just make it go gray to darker gray. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that's not Rick. No, no, no. He's, he's, He's I still don't know like how I figured out like this technique because it's super straightforward, but it's like I don't know. I, I've I've been using it for for ages, and I don't know like what was the moment that I came up like let's do it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some color burn over here. Well, and it's, and just it's a regular yeah. soft brush. Regular soft brush, nice. And you are just you're using a mouse? No. Uh, yeah, both. No. Well, I, I oh, sorry. Okay, that's both. right. Right now both. you're using the pen. Yeah, yeah. For brushing, it's like super. Like I can't go without just because of like the. Otherwise, like you have to. I know there's no pressure in it. Uh, if if you do that, um, with the mouse, like there's no pressure. So you, you keep on like erasing and and painting with your soft brush. I think that this part was a bit too heavy. Um, okay, this looks cool. Let's create some more depth. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Janak, anything with lyrics can be a little distracting, but... Uh, M music you know. wise, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but, I, but... I, if I'm by myself, I listen to, yeah, music with lyrics. Lyrics are super useful for random file names. <laughs> like I can always like, all my personal work has such like random names and Oh, that's I fun. Know. I like it. Mm. Oh, that is cool. Let us know if you have questions technically as well. I know we're also, you know, just talking about music and everything, but Rick is here to answer your questions. Yeah. You know, like how many animal yeah. species are there in the world, Rick? I don't know, man. You tell me. We don't know. We haven't been able to count. All, I'm being honest. <laughs> we haven't been able to count all the animal. It might be different for mammals and other things, but animal includes insects. And that's a whole thing. That's yeah. all I know. Yeah. I know what I don't know. Interesting. The stuff the stuff I do know is much more limited. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think of any other tips I can give you. I like the layers panel squared away. Oh, wait. There we go again. Boom. No. Close tap group. Close tap group. Yeah, there we go. Let's see where it's gonna pop up next. Yeah, <laughs> it's like <laughs> But what is it? Is it because I'm not using adjustment layers at all? Like why does it show um, up? All the time? I don't know. And it was the properties panel. Can you look that up for me? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. To... Try to get. Figure it out. Infinite. I... All right, Rob Zilla taking off. Looks like he's got some work to do, which is cool. Um, yeah, awesome. Mm. We can colors as always. Mm. There is music playing in the background, by the way. Not oh, word, yeah. Someone told me yesterday. Yeah, we don't hear it. <laughs> we're just sitting here in silence. <laughs> it's crazy. And we're not talking. Everybody else like, can hear it. My girlfriend told me, like, yeah, Rick, didn't you get annoyed by that music? And I'm like, what music were you talking about? <laughs> And yes, we, we wish we could play Rainbow Kitten Surprise and Daft Punk behind these videos, but I, Daft Punk, yeah, that would, that would, that would, that's where all our money would go. Who's the licensing? <laughs> Abid says, looking excellent, man. And he is right. Make yeah, it more it's... swirly. Make it more swirly. Is that someone's comment? Yeah, somebody really? said, yes, Abid okay. says, it's looking okay. awesome. No, but make it more swirly, or is that you? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that that was me. 
Okay, I can. But add I, some. I do want you to make more swirly always. <laughs> I, I can add some layers, maybe. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, shape three. Underneath that one, let's see if we can add another layer. Um, like sometimes while you're in the process, you realize, okay, I don't have enough content to play with. So you keep on adding layers. Mm -hmm. It's always a balance. And then you figure out like, oh no, it's too much. This is, yeah. this well, is that's, too much. And that's, I guess, when you know you've sort of reached, reached yeah. the end. But it's always worth trying though, to, to figure out like how far can you push it? Um, mm -hmm. Because it's never like, I feel like your work is never really finished. Okay, let's do the alt trick over here. I've been using that a lot today. Thanks, man. The what? The alt. Oh, like, uh, oh yeah. Or the, the, what, what is it? The option is it for you, right? Yeah, alt or option. It's option for me as well. <laughs> so, Carol, just so you know, you are... Rick's just obviously just painting. So so far, just to clarify, in terms of two tools, you've used two, yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. the pen and the brush, which yeah. is very encouraging. So you I, I use a gradient too. I use a oh, gradient, gradient too. Yeah. yeah, but it just goes to show it's like you know you don't have to get create have to know all this fancy stuff to make something gorgeous. Of course, so true. Um. And Carol, just so you know, I, th I think Rick hopefully will get into like a fun highlighting uh, trick he showed us yesterday. Oh, With you want me to, 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 do, to do the warp the warp again? I mean, just because that was so awesome. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to, but. No, I will. I will. Just for you. I, I actually barely use that tool anymore uh, or barely use it nowadays. Um, ah. Because I feel like it's a bit like I, I was totally into shiny stuff. And right now, like I kind of get back to more like the rawness of forms instead of making it super glossy. I make it more like a different kind of material. Um, I don't well, know why that is. It must maybe the age I'm getting old. Yeah, old, in terms old, in terms of dusty. No, in terms of what again? I'm sorry, I was reading a comment. Oh, no, no, I mean with the, with the warp tool, like I'll do oh. it once more for you. Oh, here we go. Let's make an orange warp. I duplicate it. Wait, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it want? Okay, right now it does. Okay, great. So two radial gradients, one on top of the next. The smaller one in the center is lighter. Yeah, you, you can put it on screen mode as well to have a more like brighter fall off. And I, I feel like this is key, this little dot in the center. Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely need that because huge. that's that's going to be the little like light reflection you'll, you'll have. So I'll merge these and I got my, you can see it better on a black background what I actually created, I think. Or a darker rectangle behind it. So you can see it. This is it. This is it. Our light source. Um, well, not our source. I, hey, look, the property is back again. Oh, I don't know what to do. Anyways, I'll figure it out because yeah. I'm just going to figure it out. Okay, and then we go to the magic warp tool. Uh, we go to transform. Yeah, probably most people know where the warp tool is. Go to transform, right click, and warp. Warp, 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 warp. Yeah, and you uh, you could actually, this is also interesting, you could click, what you did yesterday is you clicked right in the center and dragged. Yeah, yeah. People think you have to adjust the no, 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 no. points, right? No, Didn't no, you just click, I, click in the center? Warp, you, you mean like this, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that way, like you can, as you can see, you have multiple angles you can. Like, I didn't even know that. Oh, word. I'm the professional. I did not. <laughs> it, hey, that's that's why you're you were the guests and I'm just the I'm just damage oh, so, I'm damage control. So you can have like as much like weird angles you can have. So that for instance like, did I is it still under my copy paste? No. Oh man. What you should always do once you're working with those light effects like this one have one hidden because like otherwise you have to recreate the same yeah. stuff over and over again. Are you tired, Paul? 
No, I'm sorry. I just yawned. It's fine. I got a full night's sleep. Some highlights. Boom. I'm like, whatever, Rick. You're just creating awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You're awesome, Rick. <laughs> you, it is really cool. Like, and people are commenting on the curve of the R, like all this. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, it's just cool, man. Uh, oh. I joke with you. Do you use a dream color display? Yeah, yeah. Do you like it? Dude, I love it. It's like, yeah, that, that was that was the thing that worried me most, like when switching uh, from like Apple with their fancy displays to like something else. Uh, but like, I, I never regretted it a second. This dream color is crazy. And it calibrates itself too. So uh, I think that's very useful when working uh, hmm. in the creative field, especially when you're working with printing and stuff like that. Yeah, I I think that's a good call. Yeah, in, invest in good displays if you can. I'm sure these yeah, colors yeah, yeah. are really like they're popping on your monitor. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, might be different but, elsewhere. Yeah, displays are tricky in general because like you got so many different different displays because for instance, like on my phone, this might be, look total different than from my screen, but at least I know like the dream color is super accurate. Mm -hmm. So I know like, okay, it's gonna look some something like that but sometimes i work with like people like a freelancer or something and i watch in their des displays and it looks like totally off like okay i thought i created something amazing and it looks like uh like a mess on their screen and i'm like <laughs> it's so important to make stuff look sexy it's also good for your confidence you know yeah to make things look sexy yeah and just make of things course. you like yeah mm. For Maybe. sure. And it, it could be anything, you know, it's like, I, like you mentioned yesterday, you said, you know, just learning something each day yeah, yeah. boosts yeah. your confidence. For sure. I you think know, it's you're, true. You're yeah. always insecure, I believe. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes, I mean, like I can, I can, I can have a very bad day when something doesn't work out, which I wanted mm -hmm. to work out. But I mean, that's a cool thing as well to be able to make a living from something you love so much that mm -hmm. it, can, it can make you upset. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good, when you're, good, yeah, it's a good and yeah. a bad sign. Yeah, so so true. It's funny because like I, I feel like, yes, even when you're in school, you get depressed and stuff like that. But when somebody's like learning, ra rarely are they like negative and depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like when you're learning something, you can't help but like, I don't know. I think it's a good. It's a good com combatant against sort of depression. For but yeah, what do yeah, I yeah. know? I'm not a psychologist or anything. No, but, but like I think for in the creative industry, it's quite common to feel sad about your job now, like because you always yeah. want to deliver your best, you know, and you're not a machine. Like a client asks something, and sometimes you're simply not able to deliver. Mm-hmm. Oh That's yeah, fun. man. Oh like, for sure. Oh man, and then you keep on like, oh shit, oh. I'm. Uh, I'm a piece of shit, but yeah, <laughs> oh, I, I have it quite often as well. I'm like, oh shit, break. <laughs> oh, sorry, I swear. I, I swear. <laughs> You're killing me. You're hilarious. No, it's all good. We're we're all, we're all adults here, but I apologize to any any in the uh, you know younger people watching. Um, but I, you are right. Nonetheless, this is like really good advice. You know, you'll you will get depressed. And honestly, it takes little things. I think it's just, you need a little bit of inertia to get going. Like mm -hmm. it's just like a little bit of trying a brush out and like a little more highlight, you know, and just this progression starts to build. And next thing you know, you're, you're, you know, working for yourself like you're doing now, right? You it's know? it's still, always still trying to break into the leaf blowing business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's always an ongoing process. You know, you're never finished with work. Oh, look at that. That blood boy. Like, look at that. It's just like, yes, a layer on screen mode. Yeah. Save, if you don't mind, can you just like save this file? And then I would love to see how it looked initially before you added all yeah. the shading. Like when you did that yesterday, it was like really cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll just save this as number three. Open reason. Again, still not crazy Boom. about the arrow. Okay, that looks better. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Look at that, people. I don't know. How far are we in yet? 45 minutes? <laughs> Let's do the whole alphabet. 
<laughs> oh no, no. I, yeah. I did that. I did that once actually for a client in uh, in Czech Republic. I had to do the entire alphabet like this, which was fun actually. But I had like one wow. weekend, one weekend to do it. <laughs> I, I I hope you charged for a month of work. Oh no, I didn't because I was like twenty years old. Oh, I was like, okay, know. yeah. And and it got used everywhere, and they were like, okay, here you got like four thousand euros, and I'm like, oh, super happy over the moon. And in fact, it was like, oh. Man. <sighs> You're so funny. I think every artist, I'm sure everybody, maybe people in chat have had a story like that. I know I yeah. have. I remember selling artwork for an awesome painting for $22. <laughs> <When I was laughs> in school. And, I, and they were, everybody's like, you sold that for $22? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't even think you've re recouped your costs from the paints, Paul. <laughs> oh, man. And, but it was my first piece. And I'm just like, I don't know. What, what what was on it on the painting? It was uh, it was a cool. It was like the king card playing card, but I yeah. painted Elvis, so it was Elvis as the king, and I also did both sides. So it was a mirror image reversed, like not an easy job. No, and it was it's... yeah, it was pretty cool. It's a little bit exaggerated and fun, but man, and I I don't even have a photo of it. Can you can you like paint well or? Uh, it just well... honestly. <laughs> Honestly, I think I can, but it takes the discipline of doing it. So it's like I'll sometimes I used to take I used to go to classes and I'd love to pick back up oh, uh, really? in, in town. Just go to I love life drawing. So life drawing and painting is a blast. Interesting. And then when I so when I get back into that, I'm like, wow, I can really draw. I mean, I went to art school for an illustration degree, oh, but really? these days I do everything digitally just like you're doing. So you lose touch with the, yeah. you know, that's why I'm looking forward to like the the Wacom to you know, oh yeah, like that's that's Cintiq. even that it took you. Oh, you, you got a Cintiq? It took me this. Well, it's coming. Yeah, I'm basically getting nice. it for Christmas. So nice. I'm happy. Nice. But not not to take away. Also, just FYI, just so people know, like I think these hardware options out there are awesome. Like iPad Pro, of course. Uh, on iPad, we have Photoshop for the iPad. We're constantly adding features to to it, so that could substitute as an actual display as well. Um, you know, use pencil and iPad Pro. That's another solution for people. Again, use use hardware like you have. You know, with your with your Z Book and uh, your dream dream display. Dream color. Know, display. Dream color display. Color. So anyway. No, I like my setup. Um, it seems awesome. Your awesome. Your office seems awesome. Like chill and your own little. <laughs> my own little creative Your bubble little, over here yeah i'm into it oh man i i simply don't know what color to assign to this one over here no oh yeah rick ricky wood that's a great question has graffiti influenced your work no 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 like oh good I'm thank you for the honest answer what awesome. <laughs> no i'm into it because like it, it 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 looks like it could be graffiti it's big and bold and like you know you create those swirly lines that you see in graffiti and you're like no yeah. it doesn't influence my work no i don't know like i he, I he influences graffiti oh it's no, the other stop. way around folks stop it stop it <laughs> yeah you got it all twisted no 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 no, I don't know. Like, I, I don't necessarily, I, I have like uh, artists who inspired me, uh, like digital artists back in the days, of course. Like well, once I picked up my first copy of Photoshop, illegal copy of Photoshop, sort of that. Um, yeah, of course. But in fact, like, there's no like real art stream or whatever that's 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 really influencing me. Uh, it's just yeah, like what? bits bits and pieces of what you see, you know? Like yeah. if you see something beautiful, it could be in real life, it could be, a print ad somewhere randomly on the street. It could be a statue. It could be. I actually had like I, I was in a casino once, and there was like one slot machine that really inspired some of my work, which is weird. Hmm. But it like <laughs> it's every inspiration is everywhere, really. Yeah. In my opinion, though, I don't know yeah. how you feel about it. Uh, no, I think I think inspiration should be relegated to just one area of the web. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Just joking, but like, no, I think you're right. Of course, inspiration should come from everywhere. If you're having like, there's all the whole thing about like having creative blocks oh, or yeah, things yeah. aren't working out. What do you do if things just aren't working out like creatively or not? What's your uh, drink beer advice? <laughs> drink, drink, drink until it looks good. No, just no, joking. No, no, no. That's no, horrible no, no, no. advice. No, Don't no, do that. Sorry. Uh, Don't. No, no, no. But yeah, of course it happens, especially, um, I do have it quite often when you're you've been so long like working for clients uh like you've really been into this 
mode where you're just like performing for someone else uh, because in fact you are you know like you're mm -hmm. doing it for on behalf of someone else or not to please yourself it's really hard to get into that like that energy where you're just like focusing on what you want to do because you're so used to get like well I, orders uh, in mm -hmm. some sort of sort of sense um I, I find it tricky from time to time to get to get like back to that like that energy where you're just creating for yourself Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're you're. I think it's a fine balancing act because you you create work for clients. You're just yeah. doing what you're doing a job. Yeah, and it's it's it can be really fulfilling doing things for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's it's interesting when the artwork you do for yourself becomes client work. Yeah, too. Like it's all very. It's a whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? It's like if you're a basketball player, you could have enjoyed playing basketball and then all of a sudden you're playing it professionally. Mm -hmm. Does it lose some of some of its appeal? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's always what I try to do as well because a client always asks for uh, work you've kind of have already done. Uh, you know, like they saw something on your portfolio which they want to like you to add like their brand to if it's color or a logo or whatever but that always like it's always like they book you for something you've created already most yes of the time. exactly and that yep that's like why i never upload any client work of mine uh mm -hmm. because like they already hire you for something you did so do you want to redo that like another time uh, yeah because people are keeping coming back for the same stuff at the end mm -hmm. that might might be quite boring too yes i agree totally that's why i typically tell people hey only put the type of work into your portfolio for the the type of work that you want to get yeah yeah, yeah. it's right. not what you've done it's not it's but not that's a also hit. challenging it's a hit. that's yeah. also challenging especially when starting out like clients like let's say you're you're just new you just upload your your first behance project and it's mm -hmm. awesome but clients don't really know if you're capable of handling like a serious job you know like mm -hmm. so it's like a thin line uh i'd say uh in between um yeah yeah and maybe you have you could very well have different portfolios so yeah yeah you know like exactly that mul multiple be multiple instagram accounts on behance you can have all your projects but you can have an adobe portfolio where oh. you just select certain projects to go in your portfolio and that's like paultranniesportfolio.com and that's what you send to clients even though you have other stuff in your portfolio yeah yeah, yeah. So there's like just different ways to kind of handling it but always like think about it how you want to present yourself online i think that's super important um, yeah like create like or only post what you want to do and in fact like when you're a logo designer and don't want to be a logo designer and you want to be an illustrator stop posting logos to your portfolio <laughs> but create illustrations instead yeah yeah and and maybe make a separate instagram or whatever and, yeah uh, just just work on that just post i can. thought about that doing that but i never did it actually like i thought about it multiple times to create like a new Instagram account and start from zero and see what happens because like it's a different kind of energy because people expect me nowadays like to to do colorful stuff what if I want to do black and white stuff I mean mm -hmm. yeah it would be weird um yeah I mean it, it is still you though so unless yeah, it's yeah. a huge departure I don't see anything wrong with it like mm -hmm. it's not like you're gonna you decide to go into photography no, and then no. I would I use a different portfolio, but like if it's a natural progression, because yeah. honestly, it's really fun to see that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, to see, oh, this is where this person started out and see, scroll through Instagram and see how their, the color palette has changed, how, where black <laughs> and white gets introduced and all that stuff would be kind of cool. Black and white would never happen for me. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think of, uh, again, we just had Magdal Lopez up. And you can scroll through all his work and see how his stuff has changed. Uh, that's who I think of when I say that is all. But your portfolio is awesome. Your Instagram is awesome. Um, and honestly, we want to highlight others that are out there. If you're joining us today, we have an artist spotlight that we're going to do. Quick time check. In about 30 minutes, we'll do an artist spotlight where we get to shine, shine the light on somebody in chat or somebody that submitted their portfolio. So get yours submitted. And uh, we'd love to just give you props and virtual pat on the back for the work you've done. 
Uh, oh yeah, so just to answer your question, Christoph, uh, there's Cinema 4D Lite. It's in um, After Effects. It's kind of hard to get to. So launch After Effects, and now I'm going to have a hard time remembering where it was. But it's not going to be in your Applications folder. At least I don't think it's going to be. You have what to launch it. You have to launch it from After Effects. Uh, it's a limited version where you could have you could have models that are integrated, and you can have camera movements, and oh, that is that's... all integrated into After Effects to you know integrate with 2D. But there are definitely limitations because it is light. I don't know what all those limitations <laughs> are. I, as, I assume it's some of the modeling stuff and some of the rendering stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. again, it's supposed to go in After Effects, so. I could I could find that out for you. Maybe somebody knows in chat is how you get to C four D light from After Effects. C four D light. Oh. I don't know. Like I'm not a personal big fan of those highlights anymore. But do you want me to keep them or? Uh, which one? These, those, like the the warped ones. Oh, it's so intense. Like I'd rather brush my highlights. Nowadays. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't have to. This feels Thank more you, classy to me, honestly. Like this yeah. feels like, oh, boom, this this looks K-pop. <laughs> yeah, no, you're the, thank you for showing that to us. And that highlight was almost too stark in comparison yeah, yeah. with everything else. Yeah, you kind of need to balance it out. Um, that's what I'm trying to. It could be like this orange red purple one let's see if we can how often are there live streams by the way is it like a daily daily thing oh yeah daily oh, wow. so Sick. yeah thank you for yeah i'm just kind of mentioning that uh, we have a full day. So up after you is an illustrator daily creative challenge. So it's 30 minutes where you're challenged to make an icon in illustrator. We have Mark from the maid shop. So that'll be cool doing some packaging design. So yeah, the schedule, hopefully everybody's joining us on Behance. So Behance on that forward slash Adobe live the schedule is right below us. Oh, and Kyle T Webster doing a little, oh yeah, sorry, not to skip Howard doing the daily creative challenge. But basically, we go from 9 a.m. to pretty much 8 a.m. to like 1 p.m. Pacific. So. And you're, you'll be there in front of your green screen all day? Uh, I live in the computer. <laughs> I'm all virtual. It sucked me in. Oh man. So, but yes, I'll be here most of the day, but doing other work. But sometimes I'll put up a beach background so I like feel like I'm someplace else. All right. This man. All right. Let me know if you guys have questions. Uh, Colette, of course, melted candy. Yes. Did, did someone ask why I do this in Photoshop yet? Uh, or not, not today? No, nobody's asked that yet, but, you know, people could be thinking it. <laughs> like, why are you doing this in Photoshop? Honestly, with all this gradation and brushing, it's pretty obvious why you do it in Photoshop. Yeah. What, I, what I think we need, by the way, and I, want, I, I relayed this to the Photoshop team, I want you to be able to create all your intricate swooshy shapes mm -hmm. and have them all on layers in Illustrator. And yeah. I want you to be able to bring that into Photoshop and all those individual layers to be there, like in your, in your layers panel. Dude. Does that make sense? It would be crazy, right? Would that That's be not... cool? I don't know. I don't oh, know. Look at that. What do I, I know? know? I don't know. You're the really? expert. Let's mask <laughs> this one up. Um, do you ever sort of break the border of this R? And you already did on the top and bottom, but it's still confined to the letter. What would do you, you ever do? Would you ever do a swoosh outside of the R? Oh yeah, of course. 
but not today. <laughs> not today, folks. No, this that's is... that's premium content. Hit subscribe, and you will you have access to premium content from. Oh no, I, I did. I, I did it quite often, but it's just like for teaching purposes, this a bit more clear uh, because otherwise, like, there's a lot of trial and error when you, when you want to go like beyond the shape. Um, I mean, focusing on the shape itself is enough. Otherwise, yeah. I keep on like. I can I can have some bits flying somewhere. Okay, let's create one over here. Uh, ooh! No, hey, oh yeah, see swooshiness. You don't even have to keep <laughs> it, but I am still kind of curious if you how you would add that if you're looking for that. Um, Christoph, by the way, for the artist spotlight, yes, mm. your goal is to add yourself to the artist spotlight. Like you're not bragging about you. We need to have that URL right and just fill in that form and we would just want a chance to highlight you and again it doesn't have to be perfect whatever the case is well i'm sure give you pointers but more importantly just to highlight you as a fellow creative so please do that okay here we go kevin kevin page with his own tip a cool method for brushing highlights is to set the layer to color dodge. Mm. Then uh, in your blending uh, options, uncheck transparency shapes layer. Okay, cool. Kevin, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Didn't That's in your that. advanced blending options for your layer. Sounds pretty advanced there, Kevin Page. I like it. Oh. Love it. Kevin Page. Uh, I don't know. Did you test it out? No, I didn't. I was just checking out Kevin Page's work. Hopefully he submitted his portfolio to uh, to us. So it's magic. Yeah, I'll have to try that. I usually don't go into the advanced blending modes and uncheck transparency shapes. Later. I didn't even oh. know it was it was there. <laughs> yeah, so I might I might give it a whirl. He's like, it's magic. Is that a new feature or like to, to get into those advanced advanced blending modes? Is it what? Is it? Is it, is it a new thing or has no, it has it's, always it's, been out it, there? It's been there in a while. It's just nobody knows about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it's like in an obscure menu that you just never look at? That's where it is. Yeah. So, but basically, if you double click on the layer, I'll, I'll go ahead and try something or see if I can. It's tricky to Weird. get outside the bar. And if it's if it's not working, that's okay. Boom. Does everybody see that? Rick doing your little merge shapes. I like it. <laughs> Hopefully everybody I'll... caught that. Merge <laughs> shapes. So those are two vector layers. You still keep the paths and all that good stuff. Yeah, and if I want to blow it up, like, and I, okay, it's not a good way of doing it, but when the uh, like it's it's really urgent to do it and to make it more high res, you can always blur out like the like do a Gaussian blur over your soft brush. <laughs> yeah, so you can still make it in a higher res when needed. Yeah. Oh, that's a good that's a good tip. I like that. Ooh. Uh, all right, so. Okay. All right, well, let me know the next time the properties panel pops up. I mean, I'll be, I'll be watching, but I, okay. okay. I might've figured it out. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't really pay attention to it. It's just like I, it happens. I think it's when you're drawing shapes. Oh, for real? Yeah, let me. Yeah. Should I draw a shape? Because I did. I just drew like those new shapes. Like yeah, this draw, one and, and that one. Draw, just draw a shape real fast. Yeah, if you don't okay. mind. Let's create a shape. I don't know for sure. Nope. Doesn't pop up. Okay, good. On to so, the next one. Hmm. So, but there is in the properties panel in the flyout menu in the upper right, there's a show shape creation. So if you uncheck that box, it should make it so the properties panel doesn't pop up. Exactly. So basically next time the properties panel pops up, oh. we'll go to that flyout menu and turn off whatever checkboxes in there. Thanks, Chief. Um, what else can we do? Get some more shapes within the shapes. Someone doing the dishes? Uh, this is none of your business. Everybody just <laughs> listen to the music. Oh, no, listen to the smooth jams of Paco, DJ, DJ Pac-Man on the ones and twos, people. So ignore, <laughs> ignore the man behind the curtain, as they say. And I uh, want to welcome you. Also, if it's your first time, uh, Oh, that would be awesome. Jan Eric, that's just a fun idea. I don't think you'll do it, Rick, but he's like, maybe around Halloween, you could do a gory version with innards and blood and gross stuff. Oh, dude, no. That would, like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> and, I, and I know you, you won't, right? No, it's not yeah. my cup of tea. Exactly. So, sorry about that. I appreciate the feedback, though. <laughs> I like challenges, but this, this one goes a bit too far. Like, that's like... I'm not a Halloween fan, so I don't I, create any Halloween. I love it. I, I love how you, I knew you were just going to say, nah, I don't, that's not for me. <laughs> You're like, uh, I have a brand to uphold. So if you mind. Yeah, no, no, no <laughs> Halloween. For me. I'm actually already quite out of my comfort zone with this shape up top there. Like, I don't know what's doing there, but just figuring it out. Mm. Yeah, uncheck show, create, cre shape creation. Yeah, I think I figured it out when it comes to the, this is looking really good. It's still not there, man. Somebody asked earlier as well, I know you're tweaking all these colors, but do you do a sort of a finishing post-production? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should talk? I show that? I would just, yeah, whenever. Yeah. I don't know. How, how much time do I got left? That's just quite I'd, important. I would say do it now so we don't run out of time. If you're at a, if you're at a stopping yeah. point, you can show it. Yeah, but because like it's not like finished, it's just for showing purposes, mm -hmm. showing off my magic skills over here. Oh yeah. I don't like this blue, by the way, over here. I just want to change that. And I don't know which layer it is. Oh, I like this way more. Okay, so once everything's finished, uh, I always like ch check out like. I have two ways of doing this. Um, which way would you do? You want to go for my old school way or the new school way? Uh, I want to. I kind of want to do your old school. See what you're gonna do. And I think okay, I, okay, okay. I think I might know. But go ahead. What What are you gonna do? No, I, I you're just, gonna like flat. You're gonna create a flattened version, and yeah. do you put it on top of the current version? Yeah. Uh, Oh, no, no neural filters. No, I, I actually, like, I'm going to show, like, the new school way. Like, I love... Okay. Oh, sh shit, I actually want to... Oh. Uh, like, I like to see <coughs> what, whatever I got, like, in Adobe Raw. Uh, because I kind of like it. Like, co for the contrast and, and highlights, it, it's super versatile, and it can change, like, the look. Like, oh, this looks super moody. No, but, but you can kind of, like, balance stuff out. But like the usual way, I would always do it. And I actually still do it. It's just like, because I'm working a lot with 3D renders, um, I use a lot of the, the Adobe Raw, uh, the Photo Raw one. Mm -hmm. But what I always do is like the channel mixer. Oh, I never use channel mixer. 
No, thank <laughs> you. Seriously, like this is good. No, so I have a certain kind of like color vibe to my work, and right now it's already nearly there. I would say like I I usually use a lot of you. I I just put all layers there. I'm gonna use use saturation. I always want to test out if like a plus or minus five U would change the entire look and feel. And then I got my level tool to to whiten out like to to make it a bit like. I would say like a bit more washed out, so it's less like punch in the face and a bit more elegant. Uh, so that's what, oh, wait, over here we got the properties again, wait a second, okay. When it comes to the channel mixer, this is like, I always change my preset to either like black and white with orange filter, with red filter or with yellow filter. What it does is make it black and white. Um, but once you put that on lum luminosity, luminosity, uh, it's a hard word for me. Uh, it kind of changed the colors. Um, yeah. As you can see right now, like it brightens up the yellows and the oranges and it kind of dulls out, like let's get rid of this uh, levels layer. It kind of dulls out like uh, the blues. So there's like a different kind of contrast happening within your image. And I always find it very interesting. Like I don't uh, know who, who told me that, but Let's what see for a cool. yellow one. You see that it's just like <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a super weird trick. I don't know like who who told me this once, but it's like I I never go without uh, when finishing an image, <laughs> and it's just like it can set set a total different vibe for your entire image. Like okay, when you go blue, this looks more Halloweeny. Uh, green never works for me as well. It just depends on probably what kind of colors you use. Mm -hmm. But orange like red is super heavy. Uh, but the yellow and orange one are super interesting when it comes to like my personal work. Um, for the use saturation, same. Like I would always go like minus five or plus ten or to, to see if I nailed the colors correctly. And of course, like you can kind of. I feel like this this could be cool as well. Let's go from minus five. Oh, does plus five? No, minus five. Enter. Mm -hmm. well, so you can easily see like what I, it's not a lot I change actually, but it's, it's always like a, mm -hmm. an important finessing part for me. And then put like mess around with, because I feel like the curves are always pushing the contrast a lot as well. And I think like for levels, it's, it's more suitable for my work. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also do it with the exposure and gamma uh, one, like where you where you can balance out the exposure and gamma. But I'm always like trying to find a sweet spot over here mm -hmm. where you can like compare and see, okay, this works, this doesn't work. Um, yeah. And then always like a, a noise over it. I always push a noise over it, like a, a rectangle with a 50% black. Soft light, uh, filter, noise, add noise, rasterize. I don't know why I just rasterized that. It's just that little noise, and it's especially it looks more crisp whenever you post yeah. on Instagram or whatever. Um, Into it. I'm, can, I'm, yeah. I'm not a fan of the use saturation one, by the way. And then you okay. can like treat the individual colors uh, by by either like I. I don't use it as much as I used to um, because I kind of like create the colors I want to create uh, mm -hmm. out of my head right now because it's like a routine. But back in the days, I used to tweak them a lot with selective color. Yeah. Uh, especially like a neutral vibe could be like super like, oh my God, this yeah. is really oh, wow. This is in the nature right now. Or, yeah. Oh, we're underwater. <laughs> 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but especially like tweaking the blues, um, the blues and yellows and oranges uh, are specifically like important to my work. Like how mm -hmm. intense should they be? Uh, how washed it, out should they be? How much magenta should be in there? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Your, your color palette end up, ends up getting like a little bit more like sophisticated as how it seems. Like instead of just orange, it gets a Where? little, little more peach. A little mm -hmm. more interesting, like oh, that's that's cool. Yeah, look, you can you can compare. I don't know how how good you can see it, like on my on my dream color display. It looks like mm -hmm. a total difference, but 
uh, I don't know, like this, this way you keep on tweaking, tweaking. Um, and sometimes even like when I work on a, on a brighter background, like I do right now, I prefer like the noise to be on a black background and put it on screen mode to make it a bit more sophisticated, as you say. Mm -hmm. uh, filter, just, I know you got shortcuts for all of this, but. Uh. Yeah. Oh, we do. Oh, you guys do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of like how I wrap up my my, my, my projects. Um, like whenever I'm doing like illustration work. I love it. Just finding out that balance and never put like an Instagram filter over it in Instagram. <laughs> yeah, you know, like amateurs, these uh -huh. amateurs and filters in there. That's funny. Yeah, so that oh, way no, you can... No, no. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, that way you can kind of like easily tweak your image. And but it's the same with like the Adobe, uh, like the camera raw one. Like, but you need to flatten your image for that though. Like that's really necessary yeah. if, if you do it. Uh, do you use it often? Um, Camera raw? Uh, yeah, I, I will sometimes, but not with uh, ever after I've done a huge composition like this and you have all these layers. Yeah. I'll usually, it's there's an easy button. There's just an auto button in there. Oh, in is camera there? Camera raw up at, the, up at the top. So I'll tell people, hey, you just, you're not sure what to do, whether it's brightness, contrast, colors, just hit the auto. Oh, auto. And that, oh, wow. That, that, Look at that, this. That, that oh, really man. Works. But it's because there's a this button. <laughs> There's a blend mode because that's because there's a blend mode on here. Is it? But I think so, right? Because there's no, no, it's normal. Ha! Huh. Never mind. That was horrible. That was that was like. Look at how terrible. bright. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like Photoshop tells me to do it like this, and I'm like, no, no way. Yeah. I'll do it my own way. Um, do you do you want to know how to make a a layer that's medium gray already set to soft light? Yeah. Sure. I don't know. I don't know if you're really interested in this stuff, but <laughs> like, so you g go down to your layers panel and typically where you add a new layer down at the bottom of that panel, the plus sign over here. Yeah. Hold down the alt key and then click on it. And that brings up this panel. Now, what do you usually do? You change this to soft light, right? Yeah. So you would do it like color gray and, and then soft right, light. right behind it, right below that, see how it says fill with soft light. Oh, so dude. as soon as you change it to soft light, that's when you get that checkbox. And now it makes this new layer that's medium which gray. Is like, yeah, which is transparent, in fact. Like kind yeah, of. it's just transparent. And then and then people, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, but that's, that's also quite, light. that's quite interesting to, to brush in extra depth as well. Like, look at that. Yeah. Ooh. You you can push it a little bit, like in, when, whenever you do white. Look at that. Okay, it's a little bit Dutch burn, whatever, but it's interesting actually. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's what people use it for, is they use it for Dodge burn. Oh. <laughs> You're exactly right. You nailed it. Oh, man. So. Okay. What else should we do? I can uh, put it. I can put a pattern somewhere. Like, I, I, did you try out that rotating pattern tool? I don't know if I, I got any patterns. Wait a second, let me do it. Let me create a pattern real quick. Yeah, do it. Uh, sounds like some people needs a, Victor needs a whole class on all the apps. Hey, don't we all, but it's okay. Yeah, it's um, impossible to master all of them, I think. Yeah, don't, don't get intimidated by what you don't know because nobody's an expert in all the stuff. Victor likes your smooth work. Uh, cheat sheet for shortcuts. There are cheat sheets for shortcuts. If you go to keyboard shortcuts, oh, I gotta figure this out. Summarize. There we go. Uh, well, I might as well. I'm gonna. I'm gonna like you. You do your thing. I don't mean to stop you from what you're doing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just going to set it up to where I can share my screen here in a second. Sure. Um, edit. Find pattern. Boom. And you're making a fancy pattern. Oh, man. I made a total fancy pattern. 
Uh, so I should be able to access it from here. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that should be clipped onto this layer. Hmm. But I don't see my pattern. What's going on? Uh, let me see. That's weird. I'm I'm getting lost in all your layers. Oh, dude, so am I. And thank you, because we're you typically don't work this way. You usually have a much bigger, higher resolution on. Your <laughs> it's like but... it's probably like three times that size. Yeah. I don't know why it won't show my pattern though. Like, what's going on? Look, it shows, you see it over here? Uh, yeah, double click, there it is, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't uh, show in my... Click OK. Um, I would yeah. make it's sure... Like... It's clipped on the, on the right, like... Oh. Uh, oh. You can, sometimes when I can't figure that, you could you could just option click on the eyeball just to, just to isolate that one layer. Option click. Okay, what is on option the, in, in or Windows alt, language? Alt. Alt and then click on the eyeball. Oh, 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 oh. On, on the, the eyeball. Yeah, hit cancel okay, out what? of the dialog box. <laughs> and that turn. There we go. Okay. It, it turned off all the other layers. Now, alt and click again, it brings everything back. But it's gone. <laughs> but it's gone. So it's it's like there, and it is. It has something above it. I would scroll up. Is there something on top of that that's overlaying it? Oh wait, no. Oh yeah, there. Oh is. yeah. Oh. Yeah, buddy. Oh, you got me there. <laughs> oh, it's oh, wow. teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, thanks, man. We Much did it. it. Okay, I'll just. Oh, look, everything goes wrong right now. Okay, it's fine. I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I just wanted to add this pattern to this shit. Yeah, I'm into but, it. But but I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going over. Like if I turn this because I disabled a lot of layers because of the alt thing, I believe. No. I don't know. Look, it's like <laughs> what's going on? Uh, wait a second. Yes. Crit. Boom. We're back again. We're back. Rectangle, baby. There we go. Okay, cool. Got it. Yeah, I'm not like, I, I like the trick. Like, I still need to mm -hmm. get like a, a nice way of using it, but I like the fact that you can rotate it. Yeah, and scale it down and all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting. And if you put it like on a soft light, ooh, look at that. Yeah, I like it. And a again, happy little a lot, of, a lot of control over that, which is uh -huh. good. Uh, so, so Fairy, to answer your question, or maybe Rick can, you're just playing around with pen tools, adjustment layers, brushes, and there, there, there aren't any rules or anything that you're mm -hmm. following necessarily, nope. or are you? No. Nope. Other, other than understanding how light works, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, and, and kind of understanding where light's coming from and what you know, you know where to where to brush, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's 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 trial and error, like for a long time. Like you don't know that immediately. It's just like practicing pushing. Like uh, an interesting thing I do feel though is like when working with the pen tool. If you want like f fluid shapes, like I create. Mm -hmm. Let's turn these off for now. Um, I always go with the flow in a way that I never really break up. Like for instance, that I'm like kind of like, okay, oh wait, I still got a pattern fill on. It's no trees. Cool. Like sharper edges or whatever. If you break up the flow, like if, if you, I don't know, it's if it's me or not, but this is the way I always use it. And it's just, I just go with the flow so it's organic and all that and don't interrupt that flow. Okay. So you see like how every point 
uh, kind of influences the direction of the other point. I don't know. Like for me, it's like I don't I don't do anything else. But mm -hmm. uh, for me, that's like quite to to figure out like how how organic is organic if you want it really smooth flows like use like the previous point to dictate how your next point is going to flow okay this sounds really creepy but yeah no uh, it makes sense it's, it's all that that bezier point yeah yeah that's which, it you know to make it elegant and, and in fact like it's it's for me it's like that in here let's softwares. do it I got another little tip for you that you may like or hate, but I think it's really cool if you're just starting out using the pen tool. Okay. Don't hate me. I'm sorry, but go go to hit go to the pen tool, just hit P or whatever, and then up at the top of this the options menu at the very top, hit that little gear. Clear. Wait, so gonna... Yeah, you're doing it right. Yeah, just go down to the gear. The gear. Boop. And then rubber band. What is this? So this forecasts where the curve is going to oh. be next. See how it gives you that projected line before you click? Oh, yeah. You, you instinctively know where that curve is going to be. Word, word. That's, that's true. That, but if, you're, true. It, if you are new, it might be helpful. So you could always oh, do that. That's interesting. Yeah. It's like do. doing that bowling where you can't, like, when you're young and you can't really hit, hit like, the... The gutter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> kind safety, of. safety rails or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. Well, yeah, sure. Well, yes. Yeah, okay. Like <laughs> cool. Awesome. So yeah, thanks for joining us. If you guys have questions, there's questions about like shortcut keys and different things. We can always answer those. We do have uh, to review. Um, uh, we have our artist spotlight coming up here pretty mm -hmm. soon. Whenever your game. The bumper pads, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's like a very much a military, like a camo, a little bit of a camo type of vibe to that pattern, which is which is totally cool. Well, I did, yeah. yeah. I, I'd rather do my patterns in Illustrator though, I have to admit that, uh, which is weird again, but. Oh, look at that rubber band. It's, it's actually quite great, you know. <laughs> Yo, you like it? Oh, yay! Well, it's like it's it's like something I kind of visioned in my mind, but it's reality. Yeah, it's like, like <laughs> I said, you, your, your mind has already been completing that line for thirty years now. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's it's nice, especially if you're new to all this, and even if you aren't, it's all still good. Um, yeah. So. I kind of want to switch gears here in a second. Oh, you can ready. whenever you want to. I'm ready. All right. Just give me give me one second. Turns out I'm not ready. Shame on me. Because I'm I'm doing kind of like the same thing you are. Just trying to make a cool, cool shape. Are you? And yeah. Oh, I'm curious to see that. Uh, it's it's going to be hacked together, but I I did promise some things yesterday that I wanted to show. Just because I wanted to mention dimension to you, uh -huh. and and show you like take two seconds and and show you that. So all right. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Let's check out what we have. All right, so Daniel says sick. Hopefully that's good, and Daniel isn't really sick. I hope you're doing okay, Daniel. All right. Yes, Lord, who was that? What's going on? I'm sorry, <laughs> Paco. Yes. Is Photoshop finally talking back to me? I've been waiting for this. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Paco. You are the man. Uh, I am not quite sharing my screen. I'm sorry, but I'm going to now. So I might not be able to see yours as well. Uh, cool. All right. Is that, is that better?
All right. Welcome. Looks like you can see my screen. You can see this fancy man, Doc Reed, sporting an awesome beard. I'm so envious, uh, but he's an illustrator, designer, screen printer. Uh, he is Reedicus, or I am Reedicus, as he says, for his um, URL. So this was submitted through the Artist Spotlight. We're going to review docs. We want to actually see yours submitted through the form under Artist Spotlight on behance.net forward slash w.live. Hopefully that's where you are. I'm now stalking him and we can check out his work. Uh, hopefully you could see this, Rick, but it's like very, very colorful, hardcore, awesome illustrator, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it. Yeah, it looks like he's, uh, he's loved Chuck Jones, Maurice Noble, Walt Disney, Norman Rockwell. And let's dive into some of these. Like, this is so cool. But first off, what I'd like to say, and, and Rick, by the way, like chime in. Mm -hmm. would, lo would, oh. love to, would love to get your two cents on all of this. I like cool. the screen printing five, what I see over here, like just like minimal color palettes that are ready to be screen printed. I mean, like yeah. I love the rawness of screen prints. So uh, yeah, no, super cool. Yeah, like I, I love how this, the profile pic ties in, <laughs> ties in with that. It's really cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very, very cool. This is filled out. So a lot of people don't do this, but just kind of go through, this is awesome. Uh, designer by day, illustrator, and print by print maker by night. So yeah, cool. Let's look at some of these. Shall we go to the moon? Uh, awesome. Dope. This is looks like this is made in Photoshop. Although some of this do, had. Do you think so? Yeah, some of this had to have been done in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, look at that. That's pretty darn cool. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know if this was created initially from a photo, but man. Yeah, but this stuff is perfect for screen printing. Like it's it's lovely. Right? I think it yeah. has those bold colors like uh -huh. like you like, like you use. Yeah, but in really a more cool. simple way. And that's what I like too, like to look at. Like I, I like to look at like real artists that use like a super minimal color palette and still create like striking visuals instead of using gradients and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. These certainly stand Margaret. out. Margaret Hamilton. So this sort of thing, as you know, I'm sure Rick, like you can, you could go in and you can try to do an image trace, but it will not come out this clean from a photo. Nope. Nope. It won't. So you could tell that like, there's a lot of hard work that went into yeah these Definitely. illustrations oh i love this too like look at this portfolio by the way like this is so cool like yeah it's it's basically two illustrations but this is a wonderful little layout in here yeah, it's all it's always good to post some close-ups in my opinion like once mm -hmm. you create something and upload it in behance it's definitely worth like to to, to cut like little favorite bits of yours and, and put them in there as well yeah yeah exactly like for sure. I would even love to see the, like, again, I feel like this should have been, this was probably done in, um, actually, let me undo that. Yep. There we go. Here we go. Here's more stuff. This is, uh, oh, so the Margaret is the one that developed a computer and software that made it possible for the Apollo mission to land safely on the moon. Mm. Um, so it looks like he did a picture of her and then at JFK as well. So he's he does graphics for conferences and stuff. So that's cool. kind of some background around this. To the moon. Awesome. Very cool. So feel free to leave Doc Reed a little thumbs up. There we go. Reviewing now an artist, artist spotlight. I don't know if he's in chat. Let yeah, me know what I, you guys I, was, I was just wondering, why is, isn't he here yet in the chat? Yeah, he may or may not be. I don't know if we gave him a heads up. Uh, it's always fun to try to surprise people. He was, you're right. I think, uh, yeah, Steve, Doc Reed was on a stream with Andrew uh, Hot, Hot, Hot Rattle. I always screw up his last name. <laughs> and I've known him for years. Look at this. Like, look at this, some more detail. Hey, you want some detail? Look at that. This is Factor. This is, so this is Illustrator. Is yeah. it what? Yeah, no, it's Vector. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, oh, Vector, Dope. yeah. So he, here he is playing with color. That goes so much work into that, like so much detail. <laughs> it's a cool yeah. print, though. Right? That is pretty cool. 
I even like this one. I like this cool one. So I think these reds really pop. It's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. oh, very cool. There's Andrew. So yeah, he did branding for uh, Andrew Hot Rattles, I guess his site. Some wonderful sketches. I love it when they show the process. Yeah, agreed. It's really cool. Ooh, live stream. Okay, so here is the live stream. Okay. Very nice. Looks like it's done in fresco. Yeah, he created it on an iPad. That's cool. Yeah, this is a used um, Adobe uh, Fresco is what it looked like. So Fresco allows you to draw naturally. You know, you could actually draw in vector and raster like brushes oh, cool. as well. Like this is pretty cool. What's cool about this is this depth. So these depth blurry, of field. yeah, right. I would like to know if there was like originally a source image that was used. Hmm. Um, Anyways, pretty sweet. Any any other ones? Which one do you want me to pick, Rick? I want to see that dog. Like the dog oh, we're oh. just doing top. Okay. Or you can scroll down a bit. Like I I want to see the screen print. Yeah, it looks like most of these are right here. Yeah, Tank. Let's take a look at Tank the dog. Yeah, yeah. Dogs are okay. Ah. Uh, is, this, is this drawn? It says Illustrator as a tool, right? Yep. But some of those textures could have been added in. Oh, here we go. Process, process and video. video. Yes. Like By the way, you oh, can embed this. Yeah, I, I was just wondering why he didn't do that. Yeah, you can, you can embed this bad boy. Okay, so it does look like it's done in Illustrator. Started from a sketch. So this is a pretty typical workflow. Yeah. Uh, maybe it maybe a pencil sketch and going through and just doing all this hard work, right? Like you were saying, there's like no excuse or no substitute for, for hard work and just putting in the time. And it looks awesome, all right? He's better, way better in Illustrator than I am. That's cool. <laughs> Ooh, this is looking Look gorgeous. Look at that, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. So that is uh, drawing with purple, but with a, a multiply, um, yeah. overlay blend mode that's what i love like when colors interact and like when you blend two colors yeah i could i could easily see you doing something like this like this part this is you know i yeah. mean in terms of like using those colors and like this mm -hmm. this is you know he's going through the same process that you were doing right yeah, let's, let's figure sure. out what works okay so now we have to now be he, in what did he, he switch yeah, yeah he switched. he's in photoshop he's, now he switched What's he doing? Like putting a stamp over it? Yeah, giving it that rough, rough look. Get it's it anything. rough. So yeah, very cool. Yes, this is a live stream and we're watching a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> In case you were wondering. <laughs> but again, really cool. Uh, it's always fun to see the process, which is why I like having you here, Rick, going through roughly the same process, just, uh, you know, boom, over different here. way, sort of with the creating, going that's, through that's the a, colors, and then doesn't say in the description how long this piece took. Like, how long did this take him? Uh, it doesn't really mm -hmm. say the process I use for building my art screen brand. Nope, yeah, so just three minutes. It just, it just took him three minutes. There, how, how do you feel about your work, everybody? No, just joking. <laughs> now I'm depressed. It took him three minutes. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, how did he, Steve has the best comment of the day. How did he get Tank to stand still for so long? You're funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a family, friends, I don't know, like a, his friend's dog. Uh, so yeah, very cool. Again, we can go back to earlier versions. I like going to the older versions and see where it led from there. But, ooh, switch for shit, switch foot and Anne Berlin tour poster. Nice. Anne Berlin is super old school, right? Uh, I hardly, yes. So is switch foot, but Anne they're Berlin. still cool. <laughs> Uh, cool. It's nice though. It's like a two-color yeah. screen print. 
I like it. Yeah, it's efficient. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm trying to kind of figure out the meaning of it. Or if there's, there's a like lion, a, there's a lion. In it. Oh, I see it now. Boy, this is like a sort of a magic eye poster. I, uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't get it till I started squinting my eyes. So yeah, that is cool. Doc Reed is the man. Amazing color work. This is another thing, and this is what your also your work shows, Rick. Is like the, it's all consistent. Like you, you. He has a point of view. Oh. Has a, you know, a, a color palette, and uh, yeah. And he's obviously into screen printing, kind of like I feel like you might be. No, a friend of mine. No. Is, but I, I did it once <laughs> or twice, but I suck at just using two colors. This is really cool. So detailed. Yeah. It's, it must be fun seeing your stuff printed out too, huh? Mm-hmm. What's that? I know you got your fancy printer behind you. Oh, dude, it's huge. <laughs> and glorious. So yeah. Anyways, we don't have to go through every single one. Uh, but the man has skills. It's easy to see why he was a guest. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. That's a quote from... I feel like that's a quote or a song lyric. Sweet. Very cool. All right, Doc Reed, anybody, any other comments? Do we have any other comments out there? We have That's Awesome. Abid saw the lion. So, yeah. Cool. All right. That's all we got for Doc Reed from Charlotte, North Carolina. I think he did stuff for South by Southwest as well. So yeah. Any more comments, Rick? Sorry, I'm chewing something. <laughs> oh, I, I, no, 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 it's it's cool. Like I, I like the fact that the amount of details are crazy and you need to put in so much effort and time to work on like one single piece. I always admire that when people can do that. Uh, like mm -hmm. focus on one maybe maybe he does it in three minutes. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I, I feel I feel like for Doc, there's a lot of pieces that are not here. Like he's done. It's, it seems like just the level of work this is at. There's so many more pieces that are on the cutting, just that are just not in his portfolio. Yeah. It's almost like he took a page from your book. He said, "Hey, you know what? I'm just gonna put. You know, this is almost perfect because what we have, mm -hmm. 24 pieces here, and uh, and it's and it's perfect." Less is more. Is that 24? That's not 24. That's 12, right? Or 12, I just see 12. 16. Oh, I don't see the bottom four in that case. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Huh? No, it's 5, 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. My, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm a goofball. You're right. It's 12. <laughs> it's 12. I don't know how I got to 24. <laughs> Oh, and just I just paint pretty colors. I don't do math. <laughs> so, anyways, limited portfolio point of view. Like a, a client, if they hire him, they know exactly what they're going to get. They're going to get an awesome illustrator yeah. that can make things look smooth or do a more of a print style. So, yeah. But do you feel like he's a designer or an illustrator? Because he mentioned himself like designer by day, illustrator, mm -hmm. printmaker by night. So he probably has like a side. This is maybe his side portfolio where he's I, not. I, yeah. Yeah, oh, look, yeah, there so. he got design. Here's his design stuff. Yeah, word. So he's versatile, and, it's, and that's good. Being versatile, being able to do different projects. For sure. So he could have cluttered his portfolio with all this logo work and all that. But it, it seems like this is for his illustration work. So mm -hmm. good job. Yeah, very cool. Good job, Doc Reed in the house. What are the good? And goods? more work. What's that? The goods up, up in oh, up the goods, up, the goods in the scoop. Ah, the good the stuff he's made. Oh, dope. That's cool. Like I, I wish I, I would take time to do stuff like this. I never like print or <laughs> create like actual physical things mm -hmm. to hand out to people or to sell or whatever. Like I always admire that when people take the time for it and do this, like mm -hmm. because yeah. it takes research. Yeah, and it just makes you feel lazy. And sometimes you're like, that's so mm -hmm. boring. I got to do the business side of this. Oh, I just rather create. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, good, good on him for doing his thing. So yeah. All right. That is Doc Reed. I'm going to let him go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, oh yeah, I did, I did want to show one. I want to show two things really fast just to answer some questions. By the way, somebody asked about like printing out shortcuts. You can, if you go to keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop and then it's the summarize button. If you click this, first of all, you've modified all these keys and you want to print out of it, go to summarize. And this will give you a summary of all your shortcuts that you can then like print out. Look, it's already in print format. Oh wow! So again, that might be helpful for people. Another mm -hmm. thing, I, another thing I was just going to share is also because I know you, you. We talked about C4D, but we could jump in and do something similar with, um, say, dimension. So this is dimension. I dropped in some text, as you can see. We can call this color, like that, and uh, start to play with this like all we want. Not just adding. Um, materials, but we can go to something that you've created in uh, Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever. I try to do a lame little splat, but let's take some of these actually. We'll just drop this on this text right here, convert to a standard model. By the way, you can bevel this. I didn't even like bevel it, but I could have beveled this and I probably should really fast. Bevel, turn that on. No, let's not make it classic. Let's make it round, nice and smooth. Then we can go ahead and convert to a standard model. Bam, drop on a little splash of color, as you can see here. It's not quite as smooth, I guess, now that I'm now that I take a look at it. <laughs> like look oh, at sorry. that. Sorry, why, sorry. why why did I change it? But it doesn't map on the front, right? Or am I uh, missing something here? You're not sorry. missing anything. You're just gonna watch me just change it back to turn off the bevel. <laughs> Darn it. There we go. But anyways, I'll drop on a color and it'll just put it on, say, the front face, for instance. Zoop, zoop, right? And anyways, just showing showing uh, dimension uh, and that's and that's that's what we got. So again, just different ways of working. You could render this out. Cool. All right, that's all I have. It is your time, Rick. Who's time? Should I do something? Should I continue? Uh, well, I kind of want to... Yeah. And I'll hold my screen share. You got it. Boom. There we are again. Thank you, Photoshop. <laughs> that was Photoshop talks to you now. Next level. Oh, the man behind the screens. Uh, yeah, so what should I do, actually? Because, like, how much time do I have left? Uh, you don't have a lot of time. You ha We have, like, six, five, four minutes. Four and a half, five okay. minutes. Okay. But if you did have anything, since this is our last five minutes with you before I start getting all choked up, that you're going Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Like, uh, is there something you want to ask me or you want to it, chat it, about? Or... And this is, this goes for everybody, by the way. Um, yeah. In chat, like, here's your, here's your chance. Uh, Dansky has some cool tutorials in Dimension. That's awesome. Dimension is cool. Sorry, I didn't give you a good show of it, but you get the idea. Um, yeah. Uh, Julia Masalska, she is up next. She's going to do some Illustrator as well. Again, those skills kind of carry over to this. Oh, I love that color that you're tweaking. I'm really into this like peachy color that you've been, that kind of comes through. Yeah. But that's it. just just a blend of like three different gradients actually that are making it peachy. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I do want some more yellowish on the. Oh, that looks good too. No, but I won't keep it yellow. What's up with you and yellow? Fair. I have no idea. It's so true. It's crazy. Um, and I do want to kind of mention, like, do you have any other tools like graphic cards, display, any hardware setup, anything else, 2D or 3D that you want to mention that you maybe use that we don't know about? For me? Just, or Yeah, or maybe you could just recap the tools of that are in your tool. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I use like a, a Quadro six thousand RTX as a video card. It's quite like it's it's not specifically for Photoshop, but it's for three D. It's like it's a big game changer for me uh, compared to like the. I think like Apple had like AMDs or yeah, I think it was that. No, so it's it's a big change to switch to Nvidia uh, with the video cards for sure. Um, 
but yeah other than that like it's i got 128 gigs of ram in this machine as well <laughs> oh, okay which is a lot i didn't even know it existed 128 <laughs> gigs of ram yep it's a beast huh holy cow well, that's awesome but even for this work that you're doing you, you, that's more for your 3d work doing something yeah. like this you could do this anywhere you could you could take that the z book and go anywhere and yeah yeah and on the way you're working yeah for sure oh we got one minute oh we got one minute oh that's our delicious candy oh what are we gonna Man, do it's looking so good i don't really? know like i'm i'm happy with it but i think it's done where can we find this can we find it on instagram or or something no no <laughs> No, I'm pretty selective with what I upload, and I'm nope. like, okay, this is this is cool, but hey. it definitely needs some tweaks. Like for okay. instance, like this one, I'm not satisfied with, and I mean, nothing is perfect. So at the end, like I end up posting a lot, like or nothing for for like until I like it. And okay. That's also with Behance. I'm super selective because I like I want clients to hire me for a specific kind of work. So that's yeah. what I focus to to boost online, and not like the random scraps. It's, hey. It's, it's all good. That's all the more reason to watch today's stream and yesterday's stream. It's uh, obviously going to be available on demand. So yeah, get, get the best out of it. And um, yeah, you could always hit up Rick through various social media platforms. Sure. Your call. Sure. Anytime. Anytime. Rick, send, is that okay? Send me a message. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Rick, you're a quality guy. I just want to thank you so much for hanging out thank with you, us. Thank you, man. Thank you. No, it was fun. Chill, and I just, I just, I just want you to do this all the time now. Okay. Oh, dude, I, I'm, I, I wouldn't mind streaming with you like a couple of days more. Sold. Let's do it. <laughs> Sign him That's up. Put him on the list. He's like, oh, yeah. this guy again. But yeah, thank uh, you so much, Rick. Yeah, thank thanks, you man. For everybody, when I say I really appreciate you and your work and and thank being, you, you know, uh, not worrying about what you share. But we'll let you guys go. It's back yeah. down the last five seconds. Thanks again. Thank you. Rick and everyone else. Stick around for Julia's up next. Thanks, guys.